we welcome Manuel Bronstein, VP of Product Management here at Google, to talk to us about the next generation Google Assistant. Manuel, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here. All right, let's go really big picture for a moment. When you think about how the Google Assistant changes people's everyday lives for the better, what does it look like? Yeah, so when we thought about the product, we wanted to build, uh, our mission is to be the best way to get things done. Mm. And when we say best, we think about seamless, fastest, easiest way to get things done. And if you think about our world, in some ways it's getting more complex, right? Every time you try to do something, you need to think about not only what you want to do, but the how. And if we do our job right, and we're investing to make it happen, you're going to be able to go from what do I want to get done to getting it done without having to worry about the how in many ways. And our hope is that that saves you time. And we all know how important it is for all of us to get a little bit more time to do all the things that we care about. So we're very proud to be investing in making the product the best way to get things done in many ways to give users time back. So the assistant is becoming more and more personalized. How does that help us as well? So think about, you know, when, when people think about an assistant, they're thinking about a product that it's going to learn from them, that it's going to understand what they're saying. And in, in order for the assistant to understand what you're saying, it needs to understand your world, right? If I say, call my wife, it needs to know that my wife is Ariana and, and what number to call. If I say, you know, set an appointment for my kids, it should understand who my kids are. So when the assistant starts getting to know you, or it even knows where is home, where is work, so that I can know, hey, when I'm, I'm asking it to give me a direction, I said, like, drive me work, it can understand that. The assistant becomes more useful because you can speak to it in a more natural way. You don't have to think about addresses or you don't have to think about commands. You speak to it the same way you would speak to a friend, and then it will understand what you're trying to do and help you get it done. What is your favorite new feature that Assistant announced today, and why? I mean, it's really hard to, to pick a favorite. Sure. We, the, team, the team worked really, really hard on many of the things that we announced today. I think that, you know, when you think about the promise of the Assistant being the best way to get things done, when it starts getting really fast, and what we announced with the Next Generation Assistant, one of the key things about it, and we're saying it in a, in a very, you know, proud way, which is, Imagine that it starts understanding you so fast, so quickly, then speaking to your phone is faster than tapping. Mm. Or that tapping your phone, it's gonna feel slow. That's when you know that you hit something that could change user behavior and get people to start you know, embedding themselves into this product because it's actually becoming very simple, but also very fast and, and very efficient in helping you get your tasks done. That's great. So in the past couple of years, we've seen Assistant play a much larger role in homes and phones, and now in driving. Right. So can you tell us about the experience <laughs> for drivers and what yeah. that's like? Yeah, you know, I mean, when you, when you think about using your voice and being hands-free, actually, you know, the car is a perfect environment for it, right? Hopefully, people are driving and they're looking at the road, they're not looking at their phones, they're not touching you the screen. You don't mean hands-free driving. Hands-free driving, no, it's you a hands-free hands phone. Yeah. Not on the phone. Yes. Correct. <laughs> so so, if, so, when you come think about it, actually the car is one of the places where the system can be even the mo more helpful, helpful right? And, but the car is a hard environment, right? Because there's, you know, if your windows are down, there's a lot of noise, uh, you may lose connectivity and so forth. But one of the things that we started thinking about is, let's start from the user and what is that thing that you're trying to get done when you're in your car? I mean, and there are mainly three things, right? You're trying to navigate from point A to point B, you want to get to the place, hopefully fast and safe. Uh, you also want to make sure that when you're in the car, you can get entertained, right? So you want to listen to music or podcast or radio, right? And then, of course, you sometimes want to communicate, right? You want to make a phone call, you want to receive a text message or send a text message. And, and think about doing all these things with your hands while you're driving. It's probably not the right way to do it. It's not safe. But when you start doing each of these scenarios, like driving from point A to point B, communicating or listening to media, and you can control that with your voice, and it understands exactly what you're trying to get done, then the product becomes very magical because it's really solving a, a real need and a real problem in an environment that, that needs that help. Mm -hmm. can, can you talk to us about how the next generation of the Google Assistant will change the way that people will interact with it? Yeah, so, so if you think about, you know, when, when you start forgetting about the how and you start worrying about what is it that you want to uh -huh. do you start relying on the product in a in a very you know different way it's it, it, it that's when the behavior change starts to happen right so in the first phase of the assistant it should be very responsive to you right it should understand what you're saying and then help you get it done as the product starts learning from you it can start getting more proactive 
right? So now when I get in my car, it could flash to me some missed calls or voicemails that I have so that if I want to return that call, I'm reminded of that, right? Or, you know, if it knows that in my calendar I have an appointment at 7 p.m. and it's 6 p.m. or 6.30 and I haven't left, and it also knows information about where I'm trying to go and knows the traffic, it could actually send me a notification and let me know, hey, you're probably going to be late if you don't leave now. And, and it's very interesting when the product starts getting more proactive. I think that, you know, we're going to see a switch. I mean, I see it a lot with my kids uh, that, you know, in the same way that when the, the screens became touch screens, and people felt that every screen, every screen is touchable, and you see a little kid and they see an old TV and they try to touch on the screen and the screen doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I think that people are gonna get used to talking to their products and, 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 and expecting that the product will understand what you're saying in a natural way and help you get it done. And I think that we're gonna see that evolution from basically understanding your commands, what you wanna do and help you get it done, to getting very proactive, personal, and more helpful, so anticipating your needs and the things that you're trying to accomplish. So you've got Assistant on your phone, home, and now driving. Where do you see Assistant going in the future? So it's a great question. I, look, I think that a personal assistant needs to be with you. So, so of course, a lot of the work that the team has been doing is making sure that the product is available where you need it the most. I don't know necessarily that it's gonna go to different places, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we spend time in our homes, we spend time at work, we spend time in our cars, we spend time with our phones, mm -hmm. maybe too much time with our phones. But, but if the product can always be with you, then it can help you fulfill some of those things. I think that in the future, what I'm hoping it helps, I mean, if you think about the areas where people spend time trying to get things done, but they wish that, you know, I, when I th think about it, right, when, when you want to go to a restaurant, the act of going to the restaurant and having a nice meal is awesome, right? Maybe calling to make a reservation is not that great. But if this product can start doing those things for you and remove those load, that, that load from you, it becomes incredibly useful. So I think that if you think about more of those tasks that people are trying to get done and help you anticipate it, find that ticket for an event for you that you want to go to, making that you know, appointment for you and getting predictive about those things, then the product becomes extremely magical. Before you leave us, are there any hints you can give us to find some Easter eggs in the Assistant? Sure, you know, we, we recently launched a new voice for the Assistant with John, John Legend, <laughs> and it's pretty cool. And if you ask, actually, if you turn the voice to the John Legend voice for the Assistant and you ask it to sing a song for you or sing uh -oh. Happy Birthday, you want to hear John Legend singing for you, and oh, it's actually pretty cool. That. Thank you, Manuel, so much for sharing your insight. So great to be here. <laughs>